If you were to lose your head right now, it would be game over in seconds. Massive blood loss, zero oxygen to the brain, instant darkness. It is the ultimate end for almost every mammal on Earth. But if you inflict that same gruesome fate on a cockroach, it won't just die. In fact, it will stand up, groom itself, and go about its day as if nothing happened. It can survive for days, even weeks, completely headless. It is the closest thing to a biological zombie that exists in the real world. But how? How can a creature defy the fundamental laws of life? And if losing its head doesn't kill it, what finally does? Today, we are looking at the terrifying biology of the ultimate survivor. Put down your food, because this is going to get weird. To understand how they survive the guillotine, we first have to look at their plumbing. Humans have a high-pressure circulatory system. If you cut an artery, the heart pumps blood out rapidly, leading to a quick end. Cockroaches are completely different. They have an open circulatory system with much lower pressure. When their head is severed, they don't bleed out. Instead, their neck simply seals off. The blood clots almost instantly at the wound site, creating a biological scab that prevents any fluid loss. Imagine getting a major limb cut off and your body just casually sealing it with superglue in seconds. That is the level of efficiency we are dealing with. They don't go into shock, they simply patch the leak and move on. But what about oxygen? We need our mouths and noses to pull air into our lungs. The brain controls that rhythm. If you remove a human head, the breathing stops. But cockroaches? They don't breathe through their heads at all. They breathe through tiny little holes along the sides of their bodies, called spiracles. These act like independent air vents. Tubes connect these vents directly to their tissues to deliver oxygen. This is a passive and highly efficient system that requires zero input from a central brain. So a headless cockroach is still breathing perfectly fine. It's taking in oxygen, processing energy, and its muscles are still fueled. As long as those spiracles are open, the body is fully oxygenated and alive, oblivious to the fact that its face is missing. This brings us to the most disturbing part, the brain. We tend to think that the brain is the CEO of the body, giving orders for every little movement. In humans, that is mostly true, but the cockroach operates on a decentralized network. While they do have a brain in their head, it mostly handles sensory input from the eyes and antennae. The rest of the body is controlled by clusters of nerve tissue called ganglia, which are distributed throughout each segment of their body. These are like mini brains. This means the legs can still feel, react, and move without the head. If you touch a headless cockroach, it will still try to run away. It can still stand up if it falls over. The body is essentially on autopilot. It is a biological machine that doesn't need a pilot to keep the engines running. So if they don't bleed out, and they don't suffocate, and their body can still move, do they live forever? No, the Reaper eventually comes for them, but it's a slow, cruel death. The only thing a headless cockroach cannot do is drink. Without a mouth, there is no way to ingest water. So the headless roach isn't dying from the injury itself, it is dying of thirst. It will wander around, reacting to its environment, breathing and existing for weeks, until it eventually dries out and dies of dehydration. In a humid environment, this process can take nearly a month, a month of living without a head. It's a testament to how efficiently their bodies hold on to moisture, but ultimately, physics wins. But wait, before you run to the bathroom to flush the next roach you see, stop. You might just be giving it a fun water slide ride. Most people think flushing a roach kills it. Wrong because their spiracles, those breathing tubes we talked about, are equipped with valves. When a cockroach senses water, it clamps those valves shut, creating a watertight seal. They can hold their breath for up to 40 minutes. They can be fully submerged, survive the flush, swim through the sewer pipes, and potentially crawl back up into your neighbor's toilet. Water is not the weapon you think it is. Now, let's address the elephant in the room the old legend that cockroaches will be the only survivors of a nuclear war. Are they really radiation-proof? Well, yes and no. 
It is true that cockroaches can handle far more radiation than humans, about 6 to 15 times the lethal dose for a person. This is because radiation damages cells that are dividing. Humans are constantly renewing blood and skin cells, making us vulnerable. Cockroaches molt only occasionally. Their cells divide much slower, giving radiation fewer opportunities to tear them apart. However, they aren't invincible. At high enough levels, like ground zero of a nuclear blast, they cook just like everything else. Ironically, the flower beetle and the fruit fly are actually much more resistant to radiation than the cockroach. So if the apocalypse comes, the roaches might survive, but the fruit flies will inherit the earth. If radiation doesn't scare you, this will. Cockroaches are evolving in real time to beat our technology. For decades, we used sugary bait traps to poison them. The bait mixed glucose with poison. The roach ate the sugar and died. Simple. But recently, scientists found populations of German cockroaches that have developed glucose aversion. A genetic mutation has rewired their taste buds so that glucose, which used to taste sweet and delicious, now tastes bitter and repulsive to them. They literally learned to stop eating our poison. This mutation happened incredibly fast in evolutionary terms. They are looking at our best weapons and genetically re-engineering themselves to ignore them. We are in an arms race with an insect, and we are slowly losing. Let's talk about their physical prowess. You know that moment when you turn on the light, you see a cockroach, and before your brain can even say, grab the shoe, it's gone? That isn't just you being slow. They are supernaturally fast. A cockroach can detect changes in air currents caused by your moving foot with tiny hairs on their legs called cerci. From the moment they sense the wind of your shoe to the moment they start running takes about 8 milliseconds. For context, the blink of a human eye takes about 300 milliseconds. They are literally reacting to your attack before your brain has even finished processing the image of them running. Relative to their body size, they run at the equivalent of a human sprinting at 200 miles per hour. You are playing tag with a creature that operates in bullet time. Whether you find them disgusting or fascinating, you have to respect the engineering. They have been here since before the dinosaurs, survived the meteor that killed the T-Rex, and they will likely be here long after humanity is gone. They are the ultimate biological design headless, breathless, and adaptable. Now I have a question for you. If you could have one survival trait of the cockroach, the speed, the ability to hold your breath for 40 minutes, or the ability to go weeks without food, which one would you choose? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to support our channel so we can keep uncovering the weirdest facts on Earth, please destroy that like button, share this video, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.